to recap the first two parts, we have the problem, find the equation of the sphere, center at a given point, tangent to a given plane. We start by writing down the equation of a sphere. We're given the center, so we need to find the radius. In part one, we use vector analysis to find the radius. In part two, I found a critical point for the distance function using partial derivatives. In both cases, we found the radius to be equal to three. A key step is to draw the picture. So, if I draw a sphere, we put in a tangent plane at a given point. A good idea is to rotate your sphere so that your picture looks like this. So we have our tangent plane perpendicular to the plane given by the blackboard. Then we see the radius is going to be the smallest of the distances among distances from the center to points in our plane. For our third method, we use Lagrange multipliers. So situation, we have f is a function I want to maximize or minimize on some space defined by g equal to zero. So g is going to be our constraint function. Then we define capital F as f plus lambda times g. We proceed by taking the partial derivatives of capital F with respect to x, y, and z, treating lambda as a constant. Then we set those partials equal to zero and solve. Now, in our case, I want to minimize the distance function from point x, y, z to the point minus four, two, three. That function has a square root in it, so it's a legal move to replace that function with distance squared. So that'll make our work a lot easier. Then, for our constraint function, we're only gonna consider our function for points on our plane. So what I'll do is, we'll just make sure everything is on one side, zero on the other. Then we have our f and our g. We form capital F, then we take the partials, treating lambda as a constant. So we get our three partials as follows, and we set them equal to zero. Now, I'm gonna solve for lambda in each of these, then we'll set lambda equal to what we get from one and two, and two and three. So from one and two, when we solve, I get x equal to minus two y, and two and three when we solve, we get z equal to two y minus one. And how can we use these? Well, I could put these back into our constraint function and see what comes out for y. Now, when we do that, what happens? Well, out of this comes y equal to one. We go back to our functions for x and z in terms of y. We get x equal to minus two, z equal to one. Our radius is just gonna be given by the distance from this point to the point minus four, two, three. So we get a three. We have two checks in our work. So first we have the radius coming out to be three as we've seen before. And the point where it occurs is minus two, one, one, which we've also seen in part two.